Hello everyone and welcome back to UE5 BP Guru. Uh, today I thought I'd take us through some more of the uh, kind of menu things. Um, I mentioned obviously doing a saving and loading system as well, um, but we'll do that um, after we've done a couple of menu bits. The first thing I want to do is uh, take a look at making a main menu a very quick easy thing to do but still very important i i was looking to try and get like a resident evil kind of background uh to showcase you or make one up but i, I really couldn't find anything that looked decent so i thought i'd just do um the main menu itself um there's a couple of options you can do with this you can create another level for your main menu just so that nothing happens around you um which i will always advise to do if you have moving enemies that's going to be in like close proximity like if this enemy was to walk out here and see our player we don't really want him to do that if we're still sat in the menu because we will be dead before we even start so but i know this is not going to happen so i'm not going to do that but what i would do is always start a main menu and if it's going to be a new game load the level and create a new save or if it was uh, an, uh, if you were loading the world, you could just change the player's starting location and things like that once it, they spawn in. Um, so there's a few options with that. Just so we can see kind of what's going on, what I'm going to do is um, I'm going to create an image, but that image is going to just basically. Be transparent so you can kind of see what i mean um that's what i, th I think is going to be best so we'll make it dark but we'll make it like 0 0.75 that should be opaque enough uh, and then all we need for our main menu for the resident evil anyway is just a few buttons and you can create these to be texts you can create them to be like little icons or just exactly what i'm doing it really doesn't make much difference the style of it can be whatever you want it to be and there's like three buttons we're going to need. There's, there, there should be four because you'd have an options eventually. But for now, we're just going to create what we need, which is going to be um, the new level. So we'll do three texts. So if you remember the old Resident Evils, they have like a big still image at the back. So I think Resident Evils was like the eye looking through the door. And then you had... Um, I think Resident Evil Village was like the scarecrow in the fields. So you can you can do kind of like whatever you want, basically. Uh, you can have a live image if you want. You can look up render targets, or you can do what I'm doing, which would have been the still image. Uh, so we're going to do new game. I always like my text to be stand out, so I always make them black. Uh, and then we want load game, which will come in handy once we do our loading and saving. Um, and then we want uh, quit game, <clears throat> which uh, is really, really simple. It's like a one node setup. So rename these so that they actually make sense, the buttons themselves. So uh, load game button and quit game button. Straight away, the quit game button is super duper easy. Uh, we just need to take this. Uh, and on the bottom here you have on clicked and then we're just gonna type out quit game and that's all you need because <clears throat> it's a single player game that's all you need uh, and if it's new game uh, we'll do on clicked we'll get the on click for both of them like so now load game we're gonna sort out uh, another time because we're gonna want another menu to appear that we can select our load game from but we've got new game uh, a new game is literally just going to... Now, again, like I said, if you're going to do um, a whole new world, you need to open that level. Uh, you'll probably want to transfer any data over into um, the new game as well. But uh, typically just a Boolean to say it is a new game, and you can set that up in something that is persistent, like uh, the game mode is always typically persistent throughout different levels, so you could do that, or you could create a save game that will transfer that information over as well it's up to you which one you do but for me all i need to do 
is uh, remove uh, remove from parent. That's all I need for mine because I'm going to load up into that spot anyway. Uh, for my load game, I'll need to do something slightly different, which is um, get my save data from that save file and um, set my location and all my items and whatever else, all my other information, uh, and then remove from parent because I'm loading the game up in the same level. So that that's the difference, right? If you're saving, if you're loading in the same level, you just need to set the information you need to set, and then remove this widget. Uh, if you're going to load uh, into another level, you need to load your save data up when you get the other side. Uh, maybe I'll show you that as well once we've got our loading and saving done. But for now, I'm just going to do this, and you'll be able to see it hopefully working. But what I do need to do is open the level blueprint and say um on event begin play um uh create widget and we'll get our main menu main menu blueprint i call it blueprint i shouldn't have done that uh and then add to viewport And um, there's that. And then if we now press play, uh, we get our, obviously if this was not opaque, this wouldn't be on the top here. Um, but we can just click new game, remove our parent, and we're in a new game position. If, um, if we press play and quit game, it quits the game. And of course, we'll do the loading game once we have a sufficient loading and saving menu. But this is just to get the basics going. Um, the other way we could do, if we want to get rid of that remove the hallway uh, thing, what we could do is um, if we open up our third person player. So then begin play, it creates the camera widget here. So all we could do is remove that um, that event there. And in our main BP, we remove this parent. Um, uh, do, 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 do. What we could do is uh, pass to third person character. Uh, no, we don't. Um, yeah, we don't need to do that actually. We can just um, create the widget for uh, camera HUD. Is it camera widget? Yep, it is camera widget. Uh, add to viewport and remove from parent. And if we now test this out, we have no camera widget. We press start, and it we it comes up straight after. It happens instantaneous, but it looks like it comes up straight after, which is great. And you could add a fancy loading screen in there, but but for the, what we've got at the moment, we don't really need it. Um, and then, as you can see, all the events play out exactly how they would have before. Um, and it's done. I will possibly move that to a new world down the line. I want to just get the saving and loading done first, and then we can kind of approach that uh, afterwards. But um, yeah, as a little basic um, menu screen, I didn't think that was too bad. And uh, hopefully you found it useful in understanding how to just get a very basic main menu up and running straight away. Um, it's For us, it was just a few nodes and it's done. Um, like I said, if, we're, if we change it up to a new level, loading in from a new level, it could be a little bit different. But again, it's honestly not too different. Uh, it's just understanding whether we're doing a new game or a load game, but we'll cover all that as we go along in the next few episodes. But thanks so much guys for watching. I'll see you in the next episode. Much love. Take care. Bye.